been a hot and dry few weeks here on our farm, with temperatures creeping up more and more each day. So we began preparing for summer by starting a new renovation project. Turning this old and neglected agricultural water tank into a little plunge pool to cool us all down during the long, hot days. After emptying it and removing decades of grime, we're back this week to really push the project forward to ensure it's ready for dipping by summer. I look like I've been fake tanning. I promise you I haven't, but yeah, very orange after trying to get off this rust. So today, we are carrying back on with the renovation of this plunge pool water tank, whatever you want to call it. These metal bars going round, but as you can see, they are very rusty. They're covered in old chipping paint. So we're going through today, scrubbing them off, trying to get it all off. Some of it's pretty stubborn, but we are going to then hopefully paint it this afternoon. We're having to keep our balance and even though it's only probably, I don't know, maybe like one meter 20 from the ground, it feels really high up here. <laughs> it doesn't really feel high. It does, it does feel high. It's giving me the heebie-jeebies. This rust and this paint is stubborn. It really is stubborn. So we've done the tops. The plan is that we will have these and we'll get some shade netting to go over the top so then we can sit in the pool when it's a really hot day, at the hottest point in the day when the sun's right over the top and we can sit there nice and cool in the shade. This end as well, because that's where the sun sets and it gets really hot that way as well. We're thinking we might make a curtain with some shade netting, but first of all, we need to get these cleaned and painted before we can even start thinking about that. I'm so sweaty. I need this hat on because it's so sunny and we're so exposed, but yeah, moist. So these are really, really sturdy, which is why we want to keep them and use them rather than replace them. But if you step back, you can see on particularly on these back ones, they're kind of bent in. What, what do you think? Do we try and bend them out or do we just leave them be? I don't know. I mean, I'm even toying with the idea of potentially putting something to brace it if we're going to want a curtain. Not to like just push it out. Maybe. I had thought about just potentially like thumping them just, <laughs> just to bend them. But now I'm thinking they're so strong. Maybe they actually go quite deep within the block in the wall. And the last thing I want to do is create any cracks or anywhere that water might seep through. So maybe we'll just leave it be. Although uh, wire bushing is pretty tiring, we are gonna persevere and wire brush the entire outside of the tank. It's covered in lichen and just general muck and dirt from the years. We were originally going to use the jet wash on the outside, but just thinking about it, this is gonna save so much water. And right now that takes precedent over the tiredness of our muscles. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just getting the pressure washer all set up because we've now finished brushing, but we need to clean everything off. And if you're wondering why are we cleaning the outside of the pool as well as the inside, well, that's because we actually want to paint it all. So we want to clean it all up and get it off. Ideally, we would have painted it today whilst we're painting the rails as well, but all of the shops are shut today and we need to buy the paint and they're all shut because today is Freedom Day in Portugal, which is a celebration of when the dictatorship ended. So that'll have to wait until tomorrow morning when the shops are reopen again and we can nip out and get some masonry paint. But for now, we'll get this pressure washer on and get it looking nice and squeaky clean. giving it another spray down with the white vinegar. It broke it down pretty well last time, but we still need to go back over the paint inside the tank with the jet wash. And hopefully it will give us a nice clean surface to actually paint on.
Victoria is doing a sterling job of pressure washing the inside of the tank and getting it clean. The vinegar, so it definitely is good for cleaning, but we thought it might have done more to get some of the paint off. The pressure washer we've got isn't that powerful because we bought it to use on the stone in the tiny house. So it's got quite a low PSI like rating. I think if we had a more powerful one that probably would blast the paint off but anybody else out there who's done this type of thing before tell me what is the best product or the best method to get this green paint off the inside of the tank and while Victoria's just finishing off the pressure washing I am going to go and dig all the dirt right immediately around the tank and around the foundation of the tank right down just so when we come to paint it we can get as low as possible kind of just below ground level. Oh, that breeze is so nice. <laughs> okay, so we are done on the tank for now. The next step was to paint the metal that goes up and over, but on the paint can it says, first of all, don't paint in direct sunlight. Second of all, <laughs> don't do it and it's over 25 degrees and it's currently like three o'clock in the afternoon so it's both of those things so it just seems foolish stupid. yeah foolish to do it and make a pig's ear of it so we're going to come back out later this evening once it's a bit cooler and we'll do it then maybe after we've walked the dogs so now we're actually going to make a little bed specifically for our cucumber seedlings because they're they're about i don't know this big yeah, three they're inches. Yeah, they're about ready to burst out of their little pots. Yeah, and I don't want them to get root bound, so we're going to make a separate area for them with plenty of direct sunlight, so hopefully they'll grow big, strong and tasty. Yummy. So I've got these off cuttings from our olive trees and I'm just going to roughly mark out the area that I want to use the enchada, the hacking tool going to actually plant directly into the ground the raised beds that we have are actually under too much shade for what the cucumbers need so I believe so I'm going to utilize the post that we've got the rope attached to and also this olive tree and going to create a vertical space for these cucumbers definitely feeling a bit concerned this year because the ground is so dry already and we're not even at the end of April. Definitely making me a bit concerned for September after we've just had months and months and months of incredibly hot weather. But I know we're not the only place to be experiencing this. I know loads of people in Spain have been having droughts and yeah, definitely gonna be a bit of a risky summer. You're getting a good workout today? So good. It's such an arms day. <laughs> This tool is so effective, but it's absolutely knackering. <laughs> well, I've only done like a really small area here, but our neighbor who must be late 70s, we've seen her literally do hundreds of meters squares with, squared with this. She's like an absolute workhorse, come rain or shine. Yeah, machine. <laughs> she really is. <laughs> we've not actually got much compost left in the greenhouse. This is just, what we have left again because it's Dia de Libertad, Freedom Day. The shop that we normally get our compost from is closed, so we just wanted to press on and get it done. Hopefully it'll be enough. See what Victoria thinks. There's actually more than I thought. It's actually compressed in the bag, so it's settled, but I think we're going to be good. <laughs> oh, Amy, these nubs may be getting too tight. styling Boris Johnson's hair. <laughs> or Trump. <laughs> or Trump. <laughs> the difference between these two dogs, we've got the older dog now just happy to just fall asleep absolutely anywhere and just chill. We literally just wants to be wherever we are and just have a sleep. The younger one literally got to keep an eye on her all the time because all she wants to do now is hunt. So 
the cucumbers are all in the bed now and I had this string here and I was going to actually put across the horizontal and vertical supports but I'm having a slight rethink so these plants don't actually need supports right now so I'm going to give it a day and do a little bit more research about the correct positioning of the vertical string supports. Around the land we've got so much loose rock and it's just so nice to actually be able to really establish these new projects just bordering it with this old rock. It just looks really really nice. Doesn't this just look like that we've just buried somebody on our land? <laughs> Happy with the colour? I love the colour and I'm even happier about how smoothly it's going on. It's taken to the metal so well. I don't think we said, but the colour of this paint is anthracite, so it's like a really dark grey and we think we're going to paint the rest of the tank white or an off-white, so it'll be a nice little contrast. But we're going to try and bang out this first coat now before we have some dinner and then I think Victoria is going to come out in the morning and do a second coat. Is that correct? Sounds good. There we go, that's the plan. quite hard to capture the colour I think. Victoria's just made a good point, it's pretty much the same colour as her t-shirt. I think it's ever so slightly bluer, greener. Yeah, less faded. <laughs> yeah, less faded, but yeah. it's very classy. It is, yeah, we've got a classy water tank on our farm. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Ricky's just headed off to the shop to get the supplies that we're going to need for the rest of today. And I'm just walking down to the water tank now and I'm gonna put the second coat of paint onto that metal work. So I've just got back from this shop and the builder's merchant. I've just dropped all of the blocks that I've bought from the builder's merchant down by the tank because they are weighty and we do not want to be carrying them down. And I'm pretty sure you've probably guessed what we need the blocks for already, but we are going to be building a bench within there so we can sit on there and relax, have a bit of a platform so the dogs can be in there and they can stand up and cool down as well. So the blocks that I've bought this morning are big blocks they are 20 centimeters deep by 20 centimeters high we've also got a load of old blocks which are only 10 centimeters deep and they've been sitting around for so long when we first bought the property we actually found them buried underneath a load of stuff and they've just been sitting around getting dirty getting covered in moss so we're going to try and put them to good use as well because they're very usable they just need to get the moss and dirt scrubbed off a bit but before we start mixing concrete and starting to build the bench I wanted to show you something because I'm not sure what's doing this and I want to see if any of you know. So this is our smaller orange tree and you know every single day the odd orange drops off because at this time of year that's just what happens and what we're finding is overnight something is coming and munching on the fallen oranges. Now whatever this thing is it seems to have kind of peeled it and opened it and got in and it's eating the entire flesh of the fruit and just leaving the peel. The other day we did actually see on one of our neighboring walls something run along it. It was brown, it was about a foot long, it looked like a weasel or a ferret or something like that and it's making me wonder whether that's what's been eating these oranges. So if anybody out there has any idea of this type of thing and what animal you think it might be let us know because we don't have any trail cams at the moment but we are both very curious right so before we start actually putting the blocks and stuff in the sun is right over the top of us now it's scorchio so we are going to put a shade cloth over the top because that second coat that victoria did earlier well you tested it, it's dry isn't it yeah it's completely dry yeah so we're going to get some shade cloth over the top give us a bit of protection while we're working 
So we're just quickly testing out the size that we want this to be. How's it going? Victoria's modelling. <laughs> Uh, it's very comfortable. The depth of the seat, having the blocks ra round pointing forwards, it yeah, it makes it really nice, nice angle. So our original plan was to build it that way. So just like you would a conventional block wall and have two rows of them. But when we lined it up, it first of all wasn't quite deep enough for the seat. You could still sit on it, couldn't you? But yeah. it's just way more comfortable being this that extra 10 centimeters you can sit a bit further forward and lounge back a bit more on that wall and also the width of this tank it's just shy of two meters i think it's about 197 well each of those blocks is 50 centimeters in length so it puts us in a really awkward spot because you line three up and then you basically are just short of space to get the fourth one in and if we were to have to break that fourth block we'd be breaking it in a really awkward spot so I think this is the better option although it's not technically how you would build a block wall structurally you would do it obviously long ways round we're still going to stagger them using the thinner blocks that we've got but you know this thing is just to create a base and then we're going to render it over the top anyway so I'm pretty sure it's all going to work out famous last words maybe we'll live to regret it but I think we're going to go with that Ready to do this thing. Here we go. Oh, it is hot today. This mix is just drying out quicker than I can get it down. So, gotta get a wiggle on. I'm just gonna get us some lollies and see if the dogs want to come and lend a hand. Orange or pink? Oh, whichever. Take your pick. Good. Nearly finished the first row. It's definitely a bit frustrating this process because we're doing it unorthodox and not laying them long ways one after the other the way it should be. It's quite awkward to get a line because you're getting a line on the short side. Then the spots where you would ordinarily lay your mortar. Ordinarily you can follow from the brick that was laid or the block that was laid before. Well, because now you're going next to it long ways you can't get that space to lay it down again. So yeah, it's definitely a bit more time consuming than it would be to lay a normal block wall or do it the, the proper way, but you know, it's not gonna be perfect. Will it suffice? Yes, it will It will be more than adequate for what we needed. And be. way more comfortable. And more comfortable. The depth is what we want. If at the end we've got it solid and we've got comfort, then winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> Right, we're getting to evening now and it's cooling down a bit, which is lovely. I'm nearly done. I've got one, two, three more blocks to do. But before I carry on and do them, one thing I did want to say is about getting the texture for this mortar. I'm feeling quite smug, if I'm being honest, and quite pleased to myself because I've never mixed up mortar for laying blocks before. And I was a bit concerned about the consistency and the texture. And one thing they say is you should be able to get it on a trowel kind of slap it down and then once you've done it, turn it upside down. And I have achieved that. Well, I did earlier on. I bet now the camera's on, it'll, <laughs> it'll drop off. Let's give it a go. So we get some water. Yay. Ding, 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 ding. The key thing reached up at my head under it. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, gang. It's another muggy, hot morning today, but there is at least a bit of cloud cover. So I'm gonna try and take advantage of that this morning. I've got a few hours spare, so I'm gonna carry on with some fencing. But before I do that, let me show you where I got to with the bench in the plunge pool. Right, so here I am reclining on the new bench. It's a very good height, obviously because of the mortar going in between the blocks. It's a bit higher than when we just laid them dry, which I think has actually worked out for the best because it's going to make it that bit higher for the dogs to be on. There's a chance they might even be able to lay down on here, depending on how much water is actually in the tank. But yeah, it's very comfortable. You can see it's a very nice height for me to recline on. I think one thing we might do once we've 
you know, fully rendered and painted and everything as a last step, is possibly put like a pool noodle or something like this on this back edge, just so it's a bit softer on the back. But yeah, it was definitely a bit of an arduous process laying the blocks this way. I did have, you know, <laughs> quite a bit of regret very quickly after deciding to do it this way rather than the proper way blocks should be laid. When we were talking about it before, we thought it would just make sense to do it this way because it got us the desired depth. In reality, it would have just been easier to have two rows of the thicker blocks and then to get that extra 10 centimeters that we wanted on the front, just put a row of the single depth breeze blocks, 10 centimeter blocks, but you know, you live and you learn. There was a bit of an awkward cavity on the end and it meant that on the top row, I couldn't actually lay the last block because there was nothing underneath it to support it. So what I did was kind of roughly made a form, made up a batch of concrete that had gravel in just to make it much stronger. I then filled that and then once that had set, I then had a base to put that last block on. So it was a little bit of a workaround, but it's very solid. I didn't go out of my way to make the pointing nice or anything because this is all gonna be rendered. I also didn't make it completely flat because when I was doing the thin blocks in the middle, they were a nightmare doing them the wrong way round to try and get them level. So it's kind of undulated a little bit, but minor, you know, you're talking about five mil. So we'll just smooth that out on the render. And I think when it's rendered, it's gonna look pretty good. So hopefully we'll find the time and we'll get on with the rendering next week because that's then gonna need a fair amount of time to cure before we can then paint it. But yeah, I am clucking to get this done, get it filled with water and just lounge about in the hot weather. Jack, I want you to draw me like one of your French girls. Looking at the clouds, it actually feels like it could rain. We've had to wait for the temperature to come down because during the day it's too hot to use the paint but it's cooled off nicely now, it's very comfortable and we're just going to get that paint onto the tank as quickly as possible. Are you ready to slap it on? I'm ready to slap. <laughs> about three minutes into that job and the brand new roller busted. So that's out the window. I've gone and got another brush and we've both just been working with a brush, which is kind of better to be honest, because it's so textured on the outside of this where it's a block with a little bit of like a rough render on, but it's pretty time consuming this job because we're trying to stip all the brush and get it into all the holes. But I think in reality, we need more paint. So we're not going too crazy with the detail on this first coat because we're running out of daylight, we're running out of paint. So we're just slapping it on just to get round the first time, get all four sides done. Then when we do the second coat, I think we'll properly go in and stipple every area because ideally we want it to just be as smooth as possible. This paint job might not be the prettiest, but look at that beautiful sunset. Right, and with that, we are gonna carry on, get this final coat finished. The light is fading fast, so I think we'll leave you with this beautiful sunset, and we will see you next week.